This is the first video um, on the topic of differentiation. In this video I'm just going to talk about the concept of what it is uh, and I'm going to talk about where it's come from. Um, that's all I'm going to do because it's a huge topic. Um, it's a brand new topic as well, it's something you've never seen before. It forms um, part of a topic called calculus. Calculus involves both differentiation and integration that you will do once we finish differentiation. Um, and it's going to form a huge part of the rest of your A-level and then hopefully beyond to your degree. Um, so let's talk about um, where, this top, where this idea has come from first of all. So you've probably heard the story about um, Isaac Newton and him sitting underneath an apple tree and the apple falling on his head um, and him starting to think about gravity. Uh, whether you believe in that story or not, um, it's up to you. Um, but his thinking at that time is really important because it wasn't just a case of him, the apple falling down on all of a sudden gravity. He was sat there and he was also looking at the moon. And he was thinking, well, the moon is orbiting around the earth and maybe the force that's keeping the moon going around the earth, maybe that the force between that uh, and the force that's pulling the apple down towards the earth, maybe that's one and the same force. Maybe they're both because for the same reason. So the apple falls down towards the centre of the earth. The moon, maybe that's being pulled towards the centre of the earth as well. So he started to think about this. Um, he wrote down um, all of his uh, thoughts on the, not just this, this uh, situation, but a whole host of other situations in his book. Uh, the title is in Latin, but it basically means uh, the mathematical... Uh, principles of, of nature, it's basically what that means. Um, and so yeah, he, he, he was talking, he was thinking about this situation and he was thinking, well, uh, if, the, if the force on the apple and the force on the moon are the same, then they're certainly very different forces. The apples, um, in, in terms of their size, very different in terms of their size. Because the apple's fallen down hit me, but the moon isn't falling down and colliding with the earth. So they're very different in size, and he started to think about that. Um, and those of you that study physics will have seen this sort of graph before, an inverse square law, where very close to the Earth's surface, the gravity is strong, but very far away, um, the gravity is weak. And then he started to think, well, okay, so the, the force of gravity is changing, but how quickly is it changing? If I was to pick a, a random point here, how quickly is gravity changing at that point? This is where the idea of differentiation comes in. So I'm going to simplify the situation a little bit. Uh, I'm going to speak completely generally. I'm not going to talk about gravity anymore. We've just got some uh, function here, some curve. And I want to know how quickly is this curve changing at a particular point that I'm going to call at that point x. How quickly is the curve changing at that point? Now, in terms of change with coordinate geometry, we know some language we can start talking about with this situation in terms of the gradient. I, I know the gradient is the change in the y coordinates divided by the change in the x coordinates. The problem here is there is no change in the x coordinates because I want to work out the gradient at that point, specifically at that point. I don't want to work out at different x values. I want to know at that point. So there is no change in the x coordinate, which makes this quite difficult to do. So what Isaac Newton did is he said, OK, well, let me make an approximation. I've got my x value here, and what about if I pick a point a little bit further along? He said h. I'm going to pick a little bit further along here to the point x plus h. Where would that be on my curve? And he said, OK, it's here. And he said, OK, well, if I draw this with a chord, let me try and draw a better line there. If I join that up, then what's the gradient of that 
chord. I know it's not exact, it's not going to give me an exact, exact accurate answer, but maybe it will be a starting point. So he then said, well, um, I can see what my change in the x-coordinates are, what about the y-coordinates? So to work out the y-coordinate here, I would substitute x into the function, whatever that function is. I've not specified here. So when I substitute x in, I'm just going to say that I get f of x out, the function of x out. Whatever, that, whatever the function is. And similarly, the y coordinate up here, well, I'm going to get that when I substitute x plus h into the function. So that would give f of x plus h. So based on that, I can work out the gradient of this chord. And that would be, so the change in the, uh, the, change in the y coordinates is f of x plus h minus f of x and the change in the x coordinates is h so this is what Isaac Newton had for his approximation for the gradient at this point what he then said was well this is not very accurate what about if I make h smaller? What about if I made this gap here smaller? So let me, let's pick, um, I'll do a different colour. Let me do it in blue. So what about if h was smaller here? What about if I'm looking at these two points? Well, then my chord, my straight line, if I were to have the gradient of that blue line, well that's a, a little bit better, that's more, that's closer to the actual gradient, the change at that point. And then he said, okay, well, that's, that's good, that's giving me a more accurate answer. What about if I make H even smaller? What about if I'm looking at that point there? Well, then I get an even more accurate answer. So what he said was, I'm going to make H smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller in the limit of h tending towards zero so he said as x gets smaller and smaller and smaller it gets closer and closer and closer to zero that's what we mean when we say the limit of h tending towards zero we mean it gets smaller and smaller and smaller it gets closer and closer and closer to zero then the gradient will get closer and closer to b at the gradient, the accurate gradient at that point. My I will no longer get an approximation. As h tends towards zero, I will get the exact gradient at that point. So the way he wrote that down is he didn't use delta y and delta x anymore because um, this is representing a change in the x coordinates. And as I suggest, as I, as I stated, we're not looking at the change in x-coordinates anymore. What we're doing is we're looking at the gradient at a specific point. So we didn't use this notation anymore. What he used was dy by dx. So this is the change in the y-coordinates with the change in x-coordinates at a specific point. This was his approximation. But he said, in the limit as h tends towards zero, this no longer becomes an approximation, this becomes accurate. And so, this is what Isaac Newton ended up with. This is how he worked out the change in his function at a specific point. This is what's called differentiation from first principles. This is the formula. It's not the end of the story, however, um, because as he was working on this, there was another mathematician in Germany called Gottfried uh, Leibniz. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. Um, and there's a bit of controversy um, because uh, both of them claimed ownership over this. 
Um, and there was quite a lot of arguments over, over who was the one that actually managed to do it first. Um, it's generally accepted now that they were both working on it at the same time, completely independent of one another. Um, so they were both doing the same maths at the same time. There wasn't necessarily anything dodgy going on, they weren't copying off each other or anything. Um, but there was quite a lot of controversy at the time. Um, but let's say they were both doing the same maths at the same time, but they were writing it down in different ways. Um, so that's how um, Isaac Newton was writing it down. Gottfried Leibniz came along and actually, well, he, wasn't, he wrote it down in a slightly different way because he thought, or well, rather than, um, if we're going to write down with an F function here, it doesn't make sense to have a Y here. So what he started doing is going, well, really this should be your f of x and not a y. But then he thought, well, this is a bit of a mess. This is quite awkward to write down. So instead of writing this whole thing down, what I'm going to write down is I'm going to write the f of x, but to symbolise the fact that I've differentiated, to symbolise the fact that this represents the change in the function, I'm going to put a dash there. So f dash of x, it means the change in the function. It's the same thing as writing dy by dx. So that's one way that the notation, the way we write it down, is slightly different. The other thing that he's, he said was rather than writing h, because h is a bit of a random letter, he thought, well, really, we're talking about a change in the uh, x we're moving along the x-coordinate, so rather than a h, he used a delta x um, and a delta like that, like a curly d. And then he had a curly d there and a curly d delta x there, like that. Um, in terms of the notation that we use, we're kind of using a sort of hotchpotch of both of them. This is the, the way that your formula is given to you in, on the formula sheet. It's like that. So, f dash of x, this is your dy by dx, this is your gradient function, so this is the same thing as dy by dx, and we're told that that's equal to the limit, as h tends towards 0, of f of x plus h minus f of x divided by h. In the next video, um, we will have a look at some examples of how we can actually use this to differentiate some functions. But just, just to finish this video off, I um, just want to talk about why this is so important, because, like I said, this is a huge part of your A-level. You're going to continue doing this for uh, certainly in the next few weeks, and then continuing on, making it harder and harder and harder throughout the rest of your A-level and then university. Um, and so why is this so important? Well, what this is doing is it's giving us the mathematical language, the mathematical tools to start investigating change. That's what calculus is all about, it's about how things change in relation to one another. And change is what's happening all around us. Any of your subjects you think of, uh, if we're talking about uh, biology, um, if we're talking about how, um, how uh, populations can change, if we're talking about how drugs um, pass through the body, if we're talking about chemistry, we're talking about the rate of reactions in chemistry and how they change. If we're talking about physics, we're talking about radioactive decay. Um, in mechanics, we're talking about, I mean, we've done the, Su we've done the SUVAT equations in mechanics and maths, but a better version of that is using differentiation because the rate of change of your velocity is the acceleration. So you can find acceleration by differentiating the velocity. Um, that's all about geography and your population change. Uh, in computing, uh, when we're talking about um, com capa uh, capacitors that make up the uh, computer chips, we're talking about the change of the charge being stored on the capacitor. Uh, whatever subjects. We're talking about business and economics, we can model, um, and people have tried to do this in the past, obviously there's a, a human element to um, business and economics, but you can model um, 
how uh, share prices or prices generally uh, fluctuate over time using differentiation. So um, those are just some of the things I thought of just off the top of my head of places in your other A levels where you've seen change happening. We've now got the language to investigate and model that and make predictions on all of those changes with maths. We didn't have that before, but thanks to Isaac Newton, thanks to Gottfried Leibniz, we've got the mathematical language for us to start talking about change.